Hello, my friends. Welcome to episode day 365 of the Nope Coach podcast. Mad, bad, sad, glad. I'm your host, Suzanne Kohlberg. This one is for the people who have been following this show, whether you've listened to a couple of episodes or hundreds of episodes. If this is the first one you're happening across, uh, you might have a little bit of context. I have been recording this show daily for 365 days. This time last year, I sent myself a challenge to do, well, actually, really initially, this time last year, I had a co-hosted podcast. I decided to do a solo podcast. I recorded three episodes. I put them up. I went to bed. And then when I woke up, I thought, I don't know, I think that was kind of a dumb idea. I might take them down. And I already had replies from people saying that this was really great. And from there, I was like, I wonder what it'd be like to do a daily show. So I set myself the challenge of doing 100 daily shows. And when I reached day 100, I was like, I'm going to do this for 365. Not saying that I recommend this. <laughs> Hindsight's 2020, life's lived forward and understood backwards. Had I had my time again, I would have made it 200 days and then 300 days because a jump from 100 to 365 was a was epic. And I had a few moments along the way where I was like, this is a dumb idea. I'm going to not do this. And shout out to the people you know who you are who have continued to pick me up and sometimes lovingly and sometimes more forcefully pushed me along to finish this out. I remember at one stage, it was about a day 188 when I was having a major wobble. One of my clients sent me a message going, oh, I haven't heard your episode for the day. I said, because it hasn't come out, not doing it. And she's like, Suzanne, how will you feel tomorrow? You know, when people quote me back to me, it's like, that's something I would say. (laughs) How would you feel tomorrow if you wake up and you've broken your streak? Followed by... How will you feel at the end of 365 if you have done it? And so to that person, you know who you are. Thank you so much. Couldn't have done it without you. There is too many people to name who have sent me messages, emails, donations. There's so many people who've been cheering for me. And there's also been people who have been jeering, like this was a dumb idea, nobody cares, no, you know, you need show notes, nobody makes donations, this was just a waste of your time. And in all of this to say, you know, beyond being thankful for every single person who has tuned in, whether this is your first episode or your 15th or your 365th, actually, I would love to know, if you're watching this on YouTube, please comment. Otherwise, send me an email, info at suzannekohlberg.com, when, if you reach all 365. Because now that it's not daily anymore, I know a few of you have been like, oh, that's great. I got a chance to catch up. Because I appreciate, like time, time is our most valued resource. We will never get it back. We never know when it's going to run out. And so every single person who takes the time to listen to this show, whether it be daily or you catch a few in a week or whatever, I so appreciate that. The gift of your time is, yeah, can't be understated. The thing, the reason I called this episode, you know, mad, bad, sad, glad, this last year has probably honestly been one of the most challenging years of my life. And so when it comes to setting yourself a goal like this, I'm going to get emotional. I I don't apologize. I <laughs> Tears are a gift. But um. When it comes to setting yourself a challenge, do whatever it is that you want to do. We're often thinking we'll wait for the right time. Not only is there an ever right time, but we can never predict what's going to happen. Like if you just take a moment and pause and think about yourself a year ago today, what of all the things that you've overcome, good, bad, ugly, that has happened to you in the last year alone, let alone if you look back to the last five years or the last 10 years, So much happens and through it all, we're still here. We still have our own backs. And although I do claim to be on a healing journey, and I think each of us is on our own healing journey, my reflection at the end of this 365 is it's not about being on a healing journey. It's realizing that I'm already healed and it's watching everything fall into place and realizing everything's happened as it was supposed to happen. And sometimes you don't see it until later. 
Like there have been things that have stung. There have been friendships that have fallen out. There have been job opportunities that have not gone my way. There has been times that things have, you know, in the moment has been the greatest hurt that I wouldn't have become the person that I have if I had not gone through that. The lessons that I learned, the me that would not stand for that shit right now (laughs) at the time needed that to happen. And in society and, you know, in life, we are so trained, we're so conditioned to measure our success by external standards. How much money do you have in the bank? How much possessions do you own? How many followers do you have? Like, what's your count? It's been so funny when people have said to me, like, 365 days of podcasts and you only have 360 YouTube subscribers. Like, well, that was a waste. Like, the people who follow me are reduced to being a subscriber like that is a person I I'm a highly introverted person who is not made for the masses if I were to stand in a room with 360 other humans that would be so overwhelming for me I don't need hundreds of thousands or millions of followers it's not about the number it's that some societal construct bullshit that I'm not here for if you're in the pursuit of fame and fortune and influence, you're probably listening to the wrong show. (laughs) Let's just get that straight now. But about connecting, like this last year, I have made some amazing connections with some amazing people and people who have shared some things that have really moved me. And I don't know how I would have navigated this last year without this show. The thing to show up, no matter how sad I was or mad I was or bad I was or what was happening for me, that I would record an episode regardless. Some of them were short. One of them was two minutes long because I was so sick. I couldn't have sat in front of the computer longer. One day I burnt myself with a really severe second degree burn. It's just been like, this is life. And no matter what, if I can show up for myself in a small way each day, who do I become or who do I remember that I already am along the way rather than filtering and focusing and number crunching and vanity statting and all these sorts of things. There are so many people suffering in the world suffering, you know, that they don't have enough, that they're not enough, that they don't have enough money or material possessions or likes or followers or friends or connections. And this just leads us to a society that is focused on vanity stats and filtering and only showing one side of the story. Like so many people you follow, I've seen people, you know, influences where I've been traveling or whatever, and they've been doing a Facebook live or an Instagram live. And, and then the second they stop, they yell at the people around them or, you know, and it's just like, it's not even real. And what I've hoped that I've brought forward with this show is the truth, the ups and downs, the ins and outs. We, we don't need to be encouraging the people feeling like they're not enough or they're unworthy because not enough people follow them or they don't own enough or they don't have enough. Like real riches is often in front of us, but we don't even see it. We dismiss it because we're in the pursuit of something else. I don't even remember if I've shared with this show before. I probably have. And I put it somewhere else. Oh, no, here it is. In front of my computer, I keep this piece of fool's gold. So if you're not watching on YouTube, I'm holding it up on the video. So you're listening to it. It's a piece of pyrite. And it reminds me that, you know, what am I doing this for? If it's like, how many followers am I going to have? How much money am I going to have? How much possessions I have? The next thing, you're never going to find the answer in the next thing. It's like a fool's gold journey. It's realizing what you have already right in front of you now is amazing, but we're often not programmed as a society to value that. So each day, my invitation for you is to look at what you already have and look at the good in that. There's a book I read called The Gap in the Gain. I think it's by Dan Sullivan, but I could be wrong. But they speak about so many people are focused on the gap between where you are now and where you want to go. And there's always going to be a gap. Like once I finished 365 
episodes. It won't be daily anymore, but my next goal will be 400 episodes. It's a nice milestone. And then after four will be 450 or five. Like there's nothing wrong with wanting more and desiring more. But when we're focusing on the gap and feeling not enough in what we have now, that's when it becomes an issue. Look at all the things that you already have in this moment. People you may be taking for granted, people who are cheering you on and you just get used to it. Just remind yourself to be appreciative, to thank them. Uh, my, My husband, my children, my sister, my clients, my close friends, all of you, people I've become to know, people who I don't really know, but who just send me an email here and there and say, thank you for this episode. It means so much. So my encouragement for you as I wrap up this last day of daily episodes is twofold. One, look at what's right in front of you that you may not even realize to appreciate because you ignore because it's always there. Like it could be something so small. It could be the device you have to listen to this on. Like how amazing is it that you have a smartphone or a computer or an iPad or something that you can connect with someone who knows how far away around the world who five, 10, 15 years ago, never could have connected with the way we do because of the way technology has gone. Like you're having a flushing toilet. Like recently we went on a road trip and introduced my kids to the concept of a long drop. I don't know if that's an Australianism, I'm not going to get into it now, but you know, flushing toilet, fresh water, things that come at the turn of a tap now, that it wasn't that long ago that people had to work for things that we take for granted. So first part is appreciate what's already in front of you. And the second part is if there is somebody that is doing something that you admire, whether it be you know a friend, a colleague, somebody that you don't know, could you send them a message? Could you give them a review? Could you, you know, do a quick email? You don't know how much that little gesture will mean. So often we think, oh, they probably get lots of messages. I don't want to bother them. They won't notice me anyway. How many other people are thinking the same thing? Like I can tell you (laughs) the amount of messages that I get that are people not particularly nice, usually outweighs by far the people who are like, thank you for this. So if you've ever had the thought to send somebody something or share something, share something, the last episode, and I still can't English, the last daily episode, share something of theirs or let them know, you know, what it means to you. That is such a gift. And you may very well make their day or their week or their month. And notice when someone does that for you, how to allow yourself to have it land, to thank them, to appreciate it. Because sometimes we can be so quick to dismiss, downplay, push away. Yeah, there's so much more I want to say, but In closing, if there is something, if there's something you've been wanting to challenge yourself to, it could be a daily podcast, it could be writing a blog, it could be doing a reel, it could be writing a social media post, it could be, I don't know, whatever it is. How could you commit to that in a small way? Maybe don't start with 365. It's kind of daunting. Maybe start with seven days. Like, you know, anyone can do anything daily for a week or 10 days and extend it on. And just realize and tap into who you will be at the end of that and what you're going to do to celebrate that. Thank you so much for tuning in. I don't know when I'll catch you on the next one. We will see. But um, I appreciate you from my heart to yours. Bye for now.